Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please shall we all rise now for the national anthem. <laughs> Let's be seated. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> let me welcome all of us to the 2021 CIS workshop. I'd like to welcome here first the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, represented here by the Permanent Secretary in the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Mr. Adijo. I welcome you. You're welcome, sir. I'd also like to welcome here the Chairman, House Committee on Capital Market. Honorable Babangida Ibrahim, I welcome you, sir. The Honorable Minister of Finance, Budget, and National Planning, Mrs. Zainab Shamsuna Ahmed, is also here with us. We welcome you. Let me welcome the Honorable Minister of Industry, Trade, and Investment, Chief Ni Adibayo. I welcome you, sir. I'd like to welcome the amazing team that constitutes the principal officers. First, let me welcome the president and chairman of council, Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers, Mr. Olatunde M. Amolegbe, FCS. The first vice president, Mr. Oluwole A. Adioshun, FCS, is also here. I welcome you, sir. The second vice president, Mr. Oluwokbo S. Dada, FCS, is also here with us, all, all over the place, working very hard. And I'd like to welcome the acting registrar and chief executive, Mr. Josiah D. Akeusi, FCS. I welcome all the past presidents that are here with us, all the distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Your Excellencies, I welcome you to the 2021 National Workshop of Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers. This year's edition is designed to address issues germane to national development. The capital market is a profoundly specific and coordinated financial market, making it an essential agent of economic growth and development. The Nigerian capital market has witnessed obvious transformation over the years, attracting and embracing the attention and interest of both local and international investors. So the significance of a well-developed capital market is crucial to, to the fostering of economic growth it is therefore imperative that we begin to look at the ways through which the market can accelerate and catalyze double-digit economic growth, which will be our focus today at this workshop. Let me specifically welcome here 
I, I'm not sure he has slept well since yesterday. Uh, the chairman of the planning committee, he has been virtually everywhere. I remember I got a call from him last night at about 10 p.m. And when I got here about 8 a.m. this morning, he was already standing. Please join me as I welcome here, Alaji Dr. Maru Kwaranga, chairman, organizing committee. Very hard working. Please, I'm inviting you to the microphone to welcome everybody. Okay. Let me stand on existing protocol as being established by the MC. Let me go straight to the point. Um, first of all, I just want to give my opening remarks. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to the 2021 CIS National Workshop with the main theme, leveraging the financial markets to achieve double-digit economic growth for Nigeria. This year's CIS National Workshop is the fourth in a series of national discourse organized by our institute in line with our determination to make consistent, practical, and workable contributions to national development. In line with this desire, we are choosing a theme that is topical and relevant, accelerating economic growth in Nigeria. We commend the current administration consistent drive to put Nigeria on the path to sustainable development through massive investment in infrastructural development and its effort to tackle corruption and insecurity. I recognize that this focus has been largely responsible for the rapid exit the country made from the recent recessions and the slow but steady growth Nigeria has experienced in the last couple of years. It is also, however, clear that for the administration's effort to make the desired impact on the lives of ordinary Nigerians, economic growth must outpace population growth. And this can only be assured when we can ramp up economic growth to the double digits. We at the CIS believe that double-digit economic growth is achievable in Nigeria because we are a country blessed with more material, <laughs> physical, and human resources than many countries that are enjoying such. What we require is a coordinate, logical strategy and the financing to construct it, and this is the focus of this year's workshop. We have several sub-themes revolving around the main theme that seek to give a holistic balanced picture of what is needed to achieve the growth we need. Our esteemed speakers and discussants will therefore be examining not just the vast human and economic potentials that exist in our country and how to harness this for growth, but also how financial markets and digital innovations can be used to accelerate economic development as well as the critical role of financial inclusion and gender equity. We are honored to have some of the best minds from our public and private sectors today who is a demonstration of their passion for our country that have taken time out of their busy schedules to contribute their voices to this discourse. The personalities are too many to mention. I, in fact, I'm overwhelmed with the caliber and the quality of the people that are attending this workshop. The personalities are too many to mention, but let me specifically welcome the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, ably represented by the Permanent Secretary of Economic Affairs, uh, His Excellency the Governor of Kaduna State, being represented by the Commissioner of Finance, our one and ho only Honorable Minister of Finance, Hajia Zainab Ahmed. We are always proud of you, Honorable Minister. We are humbled to have you with us today. Our Minister of Trade, Chief Ani Adebayo, he has been part and parcel of this market. You are welcome back, sir. We have the Chairman of the Capital Market, representing the whole National Assembly, who is my friend, even the assembly with some beards today, but I believe he can turn back to black. Inshallah. We have our, my lad brother, the able DG of SEC, Dr. Lamy Oyuguda. We have the Chairman of Federal Illa Revenue, we have the MD of Nexim Bank. We have the MD of NSIA. We have the DG of DMO. I will continue to mention, I mentioned, and our permanent secretary, who has been very helpful in making sure that we have gotten all the support we got from the Federal Minister of Finance. We are on permanent secretary of Federal Minister of Finance. I wish, I also wish to properly thank the sponsors who have made this year's workshop possible. Our major sponsors this year include the SEC, who is our regulator, the Nigeria Exchange Group, the CSCS, the MD of CSCS is part and parcel of us. We are grateful. The UBA, Bank of Industry, Cardinal Stone, Tangerine, 
uh, IST, AVEX, LACENA, to mention just a few. We appreciate you all. The Chartered Institute of Stockbroker is unique among professional institutes. By its area of focus, the capital market is said to be a barometer of the economy. When the economy does well, the, the capital market also enjoys a boost, and we as professional investment and securities managers are better of it. We therefore have a vested interest in ensuring that the vision of a booming economy growing in, into the double digit is achieved as soon as possible. We are here to support your double Minister of Finance. As an institute, we will collect the various suggestions and solutions that will be provided at this workshop into a practical template that will be pushed at the higher policy making levels in order to see results in the shortest possible time, inshallah. Finally, our last workshop in 2017 at the same venue was held at the height of the recession with the theme transiting from recession to a global economic power. It took place when Nigeria was, at, was at, in its deepest recession, but shortly after that workshop, the economy recovered and has grown steadily apart from the recent hiccup caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. I made bold to say that the 2017 workshop was a precursor to the recovery. I am hopeful that the current one will also usher in a long period of double-digit growth for Nigeria. On this optimistic note, I wish to invite the President of our esteemed institute, Mr. Latunde Amonagbe, to deliver his welcome address and to invite the Honorable Minister to officially declare the 2021 CIA National Workshop open. Thank you very much. You know, you can almost touch his passion. <laughs> In case the capital market wants to so donate somebody for presidential ambition, that, that's your man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the president and chairman of council, Mr. Amalakwe. Thank you for the kind introduction, uh, my Seriki. Alaji Kwaranga, and thank you for the passion and the hard work in putting this together for your institute. We are very grateful. The Secretary to the Federal Government of Nigeria, as ably represented, the Honorable Minister for Finance, the Honorable Minister for Industry, Trade and Investment, the Chairman House Committee on Capital Markets, the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Finance, the Director General, Securities and Exchange Commission, the Chairman, Jais Bank, our distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Please permit me, as I stay, stand on uh, existing protocol regarding other introductions. It gives me great delight and pleasure to welcome you all to this crucial event. As president and chairman of council of the Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers in the last one and a half years, I've had the privilege of performing this role at several events, but none, I must say, has given me as much feeling of destiny and a sense of national duty as this particular one. Let me therefore begin by thanking all our very important dignitaries, special guests, and participants for giving us this honor and privilege in putting aside your other very important engagements to join us in performing what the Institute regards as a very important national duty today. We are here to brainstorm on how to fine-tune our economic policy 
and place it on the path of accelerated growth and development for the benefit of our people. Nigeria is obviously blessed with immense human and natural resources. Unfortunately, we are also listed among the poorest countries in the world in terms of per capita income. Just recently, in 2020, the country fell into its second economic recession in five years, although this is largely attributed to the COVID-19 pandemic, which affected all countries in the world. We exited this recession in the fourth quarter of the same year, 2020. However, the critical point we have to note is that historically, it has been observed that, pro that poorer countries need a much faster rate of growth of GDP growth than the advanced economies of the world to maintain standards of living as well as keep up with high population growth rates relative to the more developed economies. In fact, if we review the economic history of Nigeria, we will observe that this phenomenon is not new. In 1990, we recorded a growth rate of about 25.01%. The following year, we recorded 14.24%, while in 1974, it dropped further to 11.16%. As we can all attest, attest to, most of the fundamental economic infrastructure of the country was built around the 1970s. Our last record, record of double-digit GDP growth in Nigeria was in 2002, when the indicator grew by 15.33%. As of today, Nigeria no doubt has a massive infrastructural and educational deficit to cover. The country is also contending with a significant unemployment deficit. Therefore, it is not surprising that the Nigerian economy annual GDP growth rate is at, at the low single digit levels. We obviously need to push for an annual, annual average GDP growth rate of 10% or more over the next 10 to 20 years to achieve the potential inherent in our economy and to improve the standard of living of our people. That was the secret of China's transformation from a developing country of Nigeria status to a developed one that is rivaling the US in, in every facet of economic activity globally today. The theme for this year's CIS National Workshop, leveraging the financial market to achieve double digit economic growth for Nigeria, has become imperative to drive the Nigerian economy. Driving the economy will require financing of the right form, type, and mix. Despite government's best efforts, the local financial markets cannot be said to have been utilized optimally as at yet. This trend must be reviewed and reversed. Not long ago, the capital market, the market, a capital market was the fulcrum of, of fundraising by all the different tiers of government. Such funds is always utilized for infrastructure development. Full subscription to government's revenue bonds, which is a form of borrowing, was widely used as the risk level is almost near. Besides, government participation in the market is a win-win affair for the government, the markets, and the investors. The time has come for all tiers of government to stage a comeback to the financial markets to enhance capital raise for inf infrastructure development. Our seasoned facilitators shall surely do justice to this time-tested theme today. It is obvious that an accelerated development of infrastructure will bring about job creation and empl employment opportunities with multiplier effects on the nation's GDP. China's GDP growth at an average of 10% per year. This has lifted over 800 million people 
out of poverty in recent years. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it was just about five years ago that the Chattanooga stockbrokers hosted the, the then acting president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as ably represented by the then Honorable Minister of Finance at our very first national workshop at this same venue to provide ways of getting Nigeria out of the then economic recession and into the path of sustainable growth. Since that time, the country has been on a straight, steady path of growth until the COVID-19 COVID pandemic struck in 2020. This has negatively impacted virtually all economic sectors. But as financial engineers, our goal is to tap opportunities from every challenge. May I, distinguished guests at this junction, pay tribute to the current administration led by President Mohamed Buhari, GCFR, for the painstaking and very strategic, strategic actions that the administration had taken to put the economy on a sound footing, despite facing a once-in-a-lifetime challenge of holding and strengthening an economy after a worldwide pandemic that has decimated, that has decimated most countries' economy. We particularly acknowledge the high quality of the federal government's economic recovery and growth plan 20, 2017 to 2020, and the current mid, medium term national, term national development plan 2021 to 2025, which identifies nine areas of high priority for government attention. Some of this includes expansion of business growth industrialization and entrepreneurship, reduction of poverty and enhanced social inclusion, improved, so improved security for all, and building systems to fight corruption, improve governance, and create national cohesion, amongst others. We also believe that the Finance Bill 2021 and the recently passed PIB Bill are positive developments that should aid economic growth medium to long term. The Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers identify with all these priorities, priority areas of the government. We see ourselves as government's partner in progress in the private sector. And this workshop is only an effort to complement that valiant, valiant work that the federal government has been doing in steering the economic ship of growth, or the economic ship of this country. We believe that it is only by working together in unity that Nigeria can attain greater heights and the standard of living that the government envisions for all Nigerians. To ensure that the purpose of this workshop is achieved and the broad theme adequately addressed, the event has been divided into four technical section, sessions, with each session having a lead speaker and between two and four discussants. The key, the key areas for us are encapsulated in event sub-theme, sub -theme, which I will highlight as follows. Number one, strengthening financial market to accelerate domestic production and employment. Number two, appraising the federal government of Nigeria's economic development strategy, options for improved performance. Number three, accentuating gender equity and financial in inclusion as tools for fast-track economic development. Number four, roadmap to a digital Nigeria, harnessing fintech, cryptocurrency, and artificial intelligence to create stronger financial markets. For each of these topics, the organizing committee are taking time to identify and put together some of the best brains and experts in the field. I would not want to take time by identifying each of these individuals, but you may kindly refer to the program of events to see for yourself. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I am positive that at the end of this, work this workshop, we will have been able to define a path that could be adopted by policy makers that could turbocharge our GDP growth rate and drive us towards the economic renaissance 
that we all hope and pray for. We at the CIS believe that we, are, we have it within us as a people and the Almighty has naturally endorsed, endowed us as a nation to achieve this. I thank you all again for taking the time to honor us with your presence. Please feel free to participate actively with your comments, clarifications, and questions. Above all, I wish you all a very enjoyable day with us. With that, I will client kindly request the Honorable Minister for Finance to please declare the workshop open. Thank you very much. Good morning, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Let me recognize the Honorable Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment and also the Permanent Secretary Economic Affairs that is representing the SGF here today. But also the Chair House Committee on the Capital Markets, good morning. Permanent Secretary Minister of Finance, DG Sec, DG DMO, MD, Nexim, MDNSIA. But special respect to our host, the President of the Charter Institute of uh, Stockbrokers and the council members of the Institute. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. For some reason, since I got this invitation, I was excited. I didn't understand why. But I think um, Dr. Omar Kwairanga and subsequently the president had explained. And now I understand and I said, aha, so that's it. Because they said during the when they had the last conference at 2017, after that the economy continued to grow. So it means after this one, <laughs> The economy will continue to grow, inshallah. And uh, whatever happens, I know you will hold the executive responsible, but also join the CIS in that responsibility. So it's really an honor for me and a privilege to be here today. I meet security traders, financial market experts, regulators, economic influencers, and other major stakeholders within the Nigerian financial markets to strategize on how to achieve twin task of accelerating economic development and realizing the dream of a sustained double digit economic growth for Nigeria. You recall that one of the cardinal focus of the next level agenda and indeed the economic recovery and growth plan of this administration is to address the infrastructure deficits and improve the living standard of the average Nigerian through poverty alleviation. In this regard, I was really pleased to receive your invitation to participate in this national workshop with the Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers has organized with the theme leveraging the financial markets to achieve double digit economic growth for Nigeria. There is no doubt that the theme of this workshop is quite apt I'm pivotal to the economic agenda of this administration, as it is a known fact that no nation of the world attains optimal infrastructure development without the efficient use of its capital market. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to appreciate the important role of the Nigerian capital market, the role that it has played over the years and will continue to play in the infrastructure financing and capital formation of our country. The Nigerian capital market has over the years provided access to significant long-term development uh, projects to the government of Nigeria and also to the, not only to the federal government of Nigeria, but to other tiers of government and also to the private sector. In an attempt to achieve a consistent economic growth, earlier in the life of this administration, the government developed the Nigeria Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, the ERGP, 2017 to 2020. This plan was a medium term plan designed to foster growth and build globally competitive economy through the diversification of the economy, through increased investment in infrastructure, digitalization of the economy, improvement in the ease of doing business, but also developing human capital. 
launched in response to the economic recession of 2016, the EIGP leveraged substantially on the ingenuity and the resilience of the Nigerian people, whom we strongly believe to be our most prized assets. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the year 2020 was like no other year as a result of the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic worldwide. Our three-year continuous run of the positive growth in the GDP was truncated in the second, year, second quarter of 2020 by the harsh economic impact of the global pandemic. Our 2020 budget of sustaining growth and job creation had, had to be amended in response to the fiscal pressures arising from the pandemic. You recall that between 2018 to 2020, the federal government of Nigeria, through the Debt Management Office, had raised up to about 669 billion Naira from the capital market through three different issuance of Sukuk bonds. This financing was used to construct and rehabilitate over 44 roads across the six geopolitical zones of our country. <laughs> also worthy of, worth, of note, worthy of note is the offer for subscription of the Federal Government of Nigeria Savings Bonds by the DMO, which has been executed successfully bond issue after bond issue. And what is pleasing to us is that every time the DMO goes for a bond issue, the bonds are several times oversubscribed. <laughs> this reflects the interest of the investing public in Nigeria of putting their monies to support the federal government of Nigeria in bridging our infrastructure deficit gap. In addition, the federal government of Nigeria also has access to the international capital market with a number of euro bond issuance to finance capital deficits. And the next round of euro bond issuance will be sometime in September this year. And we will be going out to the international capital market. And already we have very positive indications in that regard. As our budgetary provisions and allocations and policy pronouncements will address to, this administration has demonstrated unprecedented commitment to towards bridging the massive infrastructure deficit in our country. Just a few months ago, government approved the establishment of, a, of an InfraCo company, an infrastructure company that we call InfraCo, which is envisaged to be a world-class infrastructure development vehicle for Nigeria. This company will serve as a platform for seamless public-private partnership in infrastructure financing in the country effectively interfacing with institutions such as the Central Bank of Nigeria, the Nigeria Survey Investment Authority, the pension funds, and other financial institutions. And also, we do have the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority, which is a vehicle that the federal government has been using to invest in several sectors, but also in the infrastructure sector. The federal government of Nigeria set up the Presidential Infrastructure Development Fund, the PIDF, which is managed by the by the uh, NSIA, and the NSIA has cause to very soon also come to the Nigerian capital market to raise an infrastructure bond. The pivotal role of the CIS in capital market formation in Nigeria cannot be overemphasized. The Chartered Institute of <laughs> Stock Brokers has been playing a vital role in the development of the capital market as it is the professional institute that has been established by the Act 105 of 1992 to provide certification for, for professionals in stockbroking, securities and investment, fund and portfolio management, asset management, as well as investment management, and also other related fields. It is responsible for the regulation, training, and discipline of members of the profession in Nigeria. The Federal Ministry of Finance, Budget, and National Planning has been working very closely with the Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers over the years. And also, the ministry is statutory represented on the governing council of the institute. I'm therefore delighted to commit or recommit that the ministry will continue to work closely with the institute to strengthen our relationship. 
At this point, I would like to encourage the CT gentlemen to keep the flag fly, flying, uphold the ethics of the profession, and work tirelessly to sustain investors' confidence in order to bring back the good old days in the Nigerian capital market so as to attract the full participation not only of government of all levels but all shades of investors. On our part, the federal government will continuously support the market by providing the enabling environment and also by making necessary legal enactments or adjustments to assist you in carrying out your functions efficiently. There's a lot of work to be done in building the Nigerian economy that we all desire to have. And achieving the face of this is needed, that is needed to reach a double digit growth is a work for everyone. This is a reality that we can achieve if we can all come together and work together as one. I wish to, at this point, pledge government's continuous support and partnership with the Nigerian capital market and the Chartered Institute of Brokers as we continue the task of nation building. On this note, I want to just pause and say it is my honor and a privilege to declare this workshop open. And I wish you all very successful deliberations as I look forward to receiving the recommendations through the communique that will come out of this forum. Thank you very much for your kind attention. You know, when I listened to the round of applause, I looked at the palm sec. He pocketed the round of applause and asked us to give the minister her own. Can we now put it together now? Thank you very much, Honorable Minister, for your love for country and service to nation. I'd like to welcome here a few people. Dr. Rabi Olowo, Honorable Commissioner for Finance, Lagos State, representing His Excellency, the Governor of Lagos State. When you become Minister, please let me know. I'd like to also welcome here um, the Commissioner Technical uh, National Pension Commission, representing the DG. I'd like to welcome uh, Chief Ayim C. Inyarere. Also here representing the Honorable, Honorable Member Judge Nosa S. Osawege, representing the Investment and Securities Tribunal, is here with us. I welcome you. Okay, you're welcome, sir. I'd like to welcome the Managing Director, Chief Executive of the First City Monument Bank, Yamusi Edo. I didn't see, okay, all right, you're welcome. And the General Manager Investment, Kaduna Industrial and Finance Company Limited, representing His Excellency the Governor of Kaduna State, Mr. Idris Issa, is also here with us. Let me welcome Mr. Daniel Nefu, uh, representing the Honorable Minister of Water Resources. I welcome you, sir, you're welcome. Your Excellency is distinguished, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you that this event is a hybrid event. Apart from the people that are seated in this hall, over 500 other people are digitally linked, and they are with us live as this event is running. And so let me welcome here. We'll have space for goodwill messages, and we are appealing that we make it as short as possible and straight to the point, probably two, three minutes max, and we want to start with the Honorable Minister for Industry, Trade, and Investment, Otumba Adeni Adibayo CON. Um, I'm always surprised when uh, 
politicians are invited and asked to speak for only two minutes. Uh, I think uh, that is uh, not possible. The Honorable Minister of Finance and Budget and National Planning, the representative of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, the representative of the Governor of Lagos State, the representative of the Governor of Kaduna State, the representative of the Minister of Water Resources, the Chairman House Committee on the Capital Market, Permanent Secretary Minister of Finance, Heads of Government Agencies, the President and Chairman of Council of the Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers, Council Members and Members of the CIS, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to address you on this special occasion. First of all, I would like to commend the Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers for organizing this workshop with the theme, Leveraging the Financial Market to Achieve Double-Digit Economic Growth for Nigeria. This conference provides a unique opportunity to initiate discussions on how states, industries, and the financial sector will benefit from market opportunities such as the African Continental Free Trade Area. We recognize the importance of the financial sector in enhancing efficient economic growth. The stock market has become increasingly more important. The healthy growth of Nigeria's stock market has helped drive output, innovation, competition, and also funded much needed development. As the economy grows, the financial services sector needs to keep pace with changing industry demands especially in terms of assessing the prospects for risk and return. Sustainable growth of the economy needs to be underpinned by a broadening and deepening of the financial system, capable of serving the needs of all parts of the economy. Economies that have sustained long-term growth have experienced enormous structural change as they have shifted from being predominantly rural and agricultural to a more urban manufacturing and service-based structure. This was certainly the history of many industrialized countries. As the country's economies diversified, their financial system grew in depth and breadth. In the 19th century, London achieved its status as the world's leading financial center because the financial sector had developed rapidly in order to serve the needs of British industry and British exporters. As it grew in order to, as it grew in order to support Britain's economic growth, it also became a major contributor to that growth. The U.S. had a similar story. As New York developed as a financial center to serve the needs of the dynamic and rapidly growing American economy, it in itself developed the skills and services that could themselves be exported. The growth of hedge funds in recent years is an example of the continued development of financial markets. The financial sector in industrial countries has become more complex it has posed fresh challenges for those charged with ensuring that the financial sector is sound and well-functioning. Ladies and gentlemen, Nigeria is experiencing growth, which makes the development of a healthy financial sector critical. In many emerging markets and developing countries, emphasis is being placed on reforms that strengthen the rights of borrowers and lenders, strengthen the credit rating system, lowers the cost of obtaining credit, and streamlines dispute resolution. The implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement will enhance Africa's capacity to unlock growth and create jobs by building our industrial capacity, enlarging our productivity, and become competitive globally. Nigeria has the largest economy and population in Africa, with more than $500 billion in GDP and a population of 200 million. This market size allows manufacturers to increase capacity and expand into other African countries. This will enable investors to benefit not only from the Nigerian market, but from other countries on the continent as well. To put this in context, Nigeria contributes an estimated 76% of total trading volume in the ECOWAS region. This is made possible because of the ECOWAS Treaty, which provides for the free movement of people and goods throughout 15 West African countries. The African CFTA grants access to 54 countries with a population of around 1.3 billion and a market value of around 3.4 trillion American dollars. 
The federal government of Nigeria, through the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, recognizes the importance of attracting and retaining patient investment in our economy. The Ministry has continually engaged relevant MDAs to implement policies that will help to achieve this goal. Permit me to highlight some of our key trade and investment promotion policies and initiatives. One, establishment of the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council, PEBEC. The Federal Government of Nigeria established the Council in 2016 to remove critical constraints and bureaucratic bottlenecks to doing business in Nigeria. Because of the work of PEBEC, Nigeria has recorded improvement in its business environment in four of the last five years based on the World Bank's Ease of Doing Business Index. We aspire to be ranked among the top 70 countries by the year 2023. Two, Companies and Allied Matters Act, CAMA 2020. The repeal and reenactment of the Companies and Allied Matters Act 1990 as CAMA 2020 provides a robust framework for reforming identified legal, regulatory, and administrative bottlenecks which for years have made doing business in Nigeria substantially difficult and impeded investments into Nigeria. Three, reform of Nigeria's international investment agreements. Nigeria has also revised its, mo its model bilateral investment treaty. A specific provision for investment facilitation has been inserted to institutionalize the principle of supporting investors to actualize their investments. This new model is a new generation bilateral investment treaty which highlights the economic development objectives of government and balances investors' rights with obligations in a bid to ensure that Nigeria attracts responsible, inclusive, balanced and sustainable investments. 4. Nigeria is one of 14 African countries to develop an online investment guide, iGUIDE Nigeria to help investors make better informed decisions about investing in Nigeria. iGUIDE Nigeria is an easy to use online platform which provides investors with up-to-date and pertinent information on the processes, procedures and basic costs of setting up and doing business in Nigeria. 5. Book of States The Nigeria Investment Promotion Commission uh, the Nigeria Investment Promotion Commission's effort to drive greater attention to subnational investment opportunities in Nigeria led to the development of the Book of States, which captures the competitive advantages and the key investment opportunities being promoted by each of Nigeria's 36 states and the Federal Capital Territory in an easily accessible format to help investors better appreciate the investment potential across the country. And six, the One Stop Investment Center, OSIC Lab. As part of efforts to modernize and upgrade our One Stop Investment Center, OSIC, we are also in the pilot phase of instituting the OSIC Lab, which is aimed at achieving a speedy resolution of investors' problems by bringing the investors and government agencies into a, quote, laboratory, unquote, until the issue is resolved. The OSIC Lab should help us to drive practical policy reform, protect existing and prospective investments, encourage investments, and create and protect jobs. Finally, I would like to encourage the Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers to continue to play a critical and strategic role in promoting economic integration in Nigeria and beyond. Whilst wishing you all fruitful deliberations, I thank you for your unwavering commitment to our great country. May God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you. And may God bless you too for service rendered to nation. Let's put our hands together one more time for the Honorable Minister. Thank you very much. I'd like to also recognize here, uh, I didn't uh, realize that he's been there all the while, the chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, uh, Elijah Mohammed Nami, who has been here with us. Where are you sitting, sir? Uh, well, let's, let's put our hands together. Uh, I didn't delay it because I didn't want to pay my tax. Uh, I'm up to date. You're welcome, sir. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, 
represented here by the permanent secretary in charge of economic and political affairs, Mr. Andrew Adejo, for his own good little message. The Honorable Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Honorable Minister, Industry, Trade and Investments, Representative of State Governors here present, the Chairman, House Committee on the Capital Markets, my brother, the Permanent Secretary, Federal Minister of Finance, Director General, Chief Executive of Federal Government Agencies here present, the President and Chairman of Council of the Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers, past presidents, participants joining us online, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I bring to you warm greetings from the Secretary of the Government of the Federation, who has asked me to tender his apology for his physical absence. He had to make the choice of not coming here today because of another national assignment. And he has asked me to deliver his goodwill message, which I am going to do without subtraction or addition. So, Mr. MC, if you gave me five minutes, except you have another job for me. If the goodwill message is 30 minutes, I will spend that 30 minutes. <laughs> I am very delighted to be delivering a goodwill message to what I may consider an assemblage of a dream mix of Nigeria's finest investment managers, chartered brokers, captains of industry, top government functionaries and, top and key economic policy makers. I therefore wish to express my appreciation to the Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers for providing me with such an opportunity. Permit me to therefore commend the effort of the Chartered Institute of Brokers in regulating the conduct and practice of stockbroking profession in Nigeria, not only in protecting the interests of their members, in the course of their business as capital market operators, but also in making sure that investors in the capital market get value for their money. As you are all aware, capital market connects the monetary sector with the real sector, and therefore facilitates growth in the real sector, and by extension enhances economic development. It is therefore imperative that economic growth in a modern society be hinged on an efficient and effective financial sector that pulls domestic savings, encourages foreign direct investment to mobilize capital for productive projects in support of a nation's development agenda. Government recognizes the important and crucial role of the Chartered Institute of Brokers in improving financial literacy and providing the necessary training and certification for capital market professionals in the country. Nigeria will not forget the role of the capital market in the consolidation of our commercial banks in 2005, as they were very instrumental in capitalizing our domestic banks to meet the minimum capital requirement of 25 billion naira. This has led to Nigerian banks being major players, not only in the regional financial market, but in the global financial market. I am therefore very delighted that the theme for this workshop, leveraging the financial markets to achieve double digit economic growth for Nigeria, speaks directly to President Muhammadu Buhari's pursuit of a double digit economic growth, especially as our increasing population dictates that it is only such level of growth that will make the optimal impact on the Nigerian citizens. As we look towards a double digit economic growth, Lessons of the 2007 dep global depression and the recent COVID-19 pandemic should not be lost on us, where we had falling commodity prices, declining exports, lower portfolio and direct foreign investment inflows. Though Nigeria survived both phenomena better than most countries, we would have done better if we had not been too dependent on oil alone. It is in this context that President Mohamed Buhari's economic agenda is focused on economic diversification as a means of tackling Nigeria's economic challenges and steering the country to a positive trajectory of inclusive growth 
and development to significantly improve the standard of living of the average Nigerian. As you are already aware and has been clearly articulated by the Honorable fin Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, government's efforts in use of capital markets as a sustainable source of funding in getting bonds for Sukuk and other projects that have been put into infrastructure development are well known. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I want to assure you that Mr. President recognizes the pivotal role security plays in opening up investment possibilities and attracting the needed foreign direct investment into the country. As such, the government is working extensively and results are becoming obvious to douse the current security challenges so that opportunities for investments will be optimized. At this junction, it is important that I identify and congratulate the accomplishment of the Nigerian Stock Exchange in ending such a difficult year as 2020 as the best performing stock market in the world. I am sure that one of the key outcomes from this workshop will be how to ensure that the Nigerian capital market maintains this laudable achievement. It is gratifying to know that the technical sessions have been tailored to address strategies and mechanisms of the capital markets, taking advantage of the ever-growing digital economy to accelerate domestic production, improve economic performance, expand financial inclusion, and most importantly, create employment for our teaming population. I have no doubt that the team of resource persons and discussants carefully selected to address all these issues are very eminently qualified to do this job. To further re-emphasize the assurances given by the Honorable Minister for Finance, Budget and National Planning of Government, I want to assure you that the Federal Government will continue to provide the necessary support your market, to your market, especially through the enactment of necessary laws to boost investor confidence and attract more investments into the country. In pledging to support you, the Federal Government of Nigeria looks forward to the continuous support and partnership of the institutes. In fact, the entire capital market, as we continue our efforts to realize the full potential of the Nigerian economy. I wish you a successful workshop and look forward to receiving the final reports. Long live the Shadow Institute of Brokers. Long live Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you for listening. I own quotes. He own quotes. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, you know, when we go out to eat in a restaurant or an eatery, uh, those people who couldn't go with us who are at home will tell you to bring takeaway. The round of applause we delivered, the palm sec has consumed it, nothing to go home to SDF. Can we deliver another round of applause now? <laughs> so, the, that's actually strictly for the SDF. Don't take out of it. Thank you very much for coming. We appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to welcome here Elijah Garuba Abubakar, uh, represented here by Dominic Inyang, uh, the C CEO of the CAC, and Sophia Abu, Head Gender Desk, National Financial Inclusion Secretariat, Central Bank of Nigeria. From the speech of the Honorable Minister of Finance to that of the Minister for Industry and the SGF, one message rings clear that the executive arm of government is in love of what the capital market is doing. What's the feeling of the legislative arm? Are they also in love? The man is looking at me. I'd like to welcome here Elijah Babangida Ibrahim, Chairman House Committee on Capital Market, to know if there's a legislative backing to what we're doing. I welcome you, sir. Uh, Honorable Minister of Finance, Honorable Minister of Trade, Director General SEC, 
Chairman Federal Air Revenue Service, DG Sovereign Investment Authority, uh, Palm Sects representing the Secretary of the Federation, Palm Sect Ministry of Finance, present chairman and members of the council, past president, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It is an honor and privilege for me to deliver a brief remarks at this 21st, 2021st National Workshop of the Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers with the theme, Leveraging the Financial Market to Achieve Double-Digit Economic Growth in Nigeria. I wish to especially spe spe commend these initiatives which bears testimony to the efforts the Institute is making in contributing greatly to the growing importance of Nigeria and the global financial system. The workshop come at a time the economy of the country is declining drastically with little or no entry of investment by investors. The main message I have to convey to this very distinguished audience is that Nigeria and indeed African countries know the critical role the institutions the institute and indeed the capital market can play in transforming our economy by making conscious effort to urgently develop world-class capital markets. We must note that the Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers, which was established by Act of 105, 1992, as a not-for-profit not professional institute, providing training for professionals in stockbroking, security and investments, fund and portfolio management, asset management, investment management, and other related fields, should not relent in their efforts to fulfilling the mandate of the established acts. Your timely intervention in the policy making of the country should not be sacrificed on the altar of fear, compromise, and unprofessionalism. Furthermore, as I always say, the capital market broadens access to economic prosperity by enabling the emergence of financially responsible citizens, accelerating wealth creation and wealth distribution, providing capital to small and medium scale enterprises, and catalyzing housing finance, capital market also contribute to macroeconomic and financial system stability by fostering the diversification of economies and raising their capacity to absorb volatile capital flows. As we all know that Nigeria is capable of attracting a lot of more financial flows than is currently does, but due to lack of sufficient depth, breadth, and liquidity, which are the major challenges facing the Nigerian capital market, and the persistent absence of strong vibrant domestic investor base, the expected outcome are not materializing. I ask the Institute to harness the input towards achieving a sustainable double-digit economic growth in Nigeria from the area of financial professionals and experts gathered here for this workshop. The Committee on Capital Market of the House of Representatives is always available to assist in any area of legislation to actualize the vision of the institution and indeed making Nigerian capital market a world-class market. Ladies and gentlemen, well, thank you for this opportunity. I wish you all a successful worship. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to also Welcome here, Mr. Shende Adenagwe, Second Vice Chairman of Association of Securities Dealing Houses of Nigeria. I welcome you. Thank you very much. <laughs>